Mm. Hot, hot, hot. Hot coffee. Anyway, this is Russ. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, today I'm going to talk about bungee cords. Uh, first off, let's clarify what we're talking about. Because there are several different types. There's the full rubber one, like this. Those things are... <sighs> They were a curse. When they, once they get a little old, they dry rot and they just break instead. And I can't believe I still got one left. Anyway, then they were taken over out there with this one. Just a cloth bound rubber elastic stuff with hooks on the end. And this has actually been the most popular and still is. And it's by far the cheapest one out there too, material wise. So uh, that's why it's probably still the biggest one in the market. Now, they also have um, latex tubing, that medical tubing. Uh, they use that mostly for uh, slingshots and for uh, spear guns. But they, you can find other uses. In the shop, I think that actually will have a lot of uses. I've watched a couple of videos about that. And it seems pretty intriguing, but that's for another video. We're not even going to focus on that. We're really talking about these bungee cords. And the fourth one that I'm aware of out there is called shock cord. I may have each had that in my hand and not even know it. I'm not sure what that is and how it compares to the others. I think it's very similar to bungee cord that we're going to talk about today. So, but if you know anything about that, you know, let me know. I'd like to be, I am curious about it. But I'm going to focus in on this type of bungee cord. And the reason I am is that there's some characteristics about this that if you understand, this is actually a very handy tool that you can incorporate and use it in lots of different ways. First off, let's talk about the price. You can buy this stuff by the roll. If you buy it pre-rolled and pre-made, it ranges about a buck to three and a half dollars a foot for your uh, bungee cords. And so that's kind of expensive because you can actually buy it in the eighth inch, this diameter, you can buy it in the eighth inch for 17 cents a foot. You can buy the thicker stuff, the uh, second most common one, the five sixteenths, and you can buy this for $0.62 cents a foot. I guarantee you that if you calculate how many feet you have of these and when you bought them, how many feet you have, you'll be shocked at how expensive you're paying for this stuff in comparison if you bought by the roll and put your own ends on it. Uh, you can buy ends for bungee cords for a buck to $2 a piece, or you can make your own for probably nothing. And lots of ways you can do that. Uh, so... There's a lot of flexibility in using the bungee cords. And if you make your own, you, there's some real good advantages, not only to whatever length you want to make it in, but also you can strengthen them up. If you put this on something and you get a certain amount of pull on it, and it's not quite enough tension holding power, then you can just double it up to two of them. That doesn't work. And then double it up with four layers or three layers. And that gives you more tension. But yet, it's still the same amount of travel. As long as you keep them all the same length. When you do it this way, you can actually then pair them up to increase the amount of strength in it. Or increase the diameter is another way you can increase the strength. So, you get the flexibility out of that. So, by having the quarter inch and the five sixteenths, that's probably all you would need in any kind of environment, I would think, to use either with the eighth inch or with the five sixteenth and start doubling up and tripling up as you need more tension uh, with it. Uh, so, buying it by the roll can be an advantage. If you do, the one from what I understand, you really should probably wrap that roll in a plastic bag and put it in a cabinet in the dark and keep it there when it's not in use, when you're not getting it out to get some off of it. Uh, because light and moisture can, um, it can decrease the shelf life and sometimes significantly. So also dry, hot temperature you want to keep that in a moderate temperature too so if you store it in a cold storage area where it's super hot in there in the summer and really cold in the winter it probably won't last as long as if you keep it in a shop that's fully uh climate controlled year-round so you might keep that in mind when you buy it and so but anyway like i said you can get it pretty cheap uh i can't remember if i told you now 17 cents a foot for the eighth inch 62 cents a foot for the 516 so it's a quite a bit of savings over just buying them pre-made as long as you store it good you'll be you have a lot of advantages 
to bind it by the roll instead. Um, so let's talk about the uses of it. The biggest thing that drives me nuts about a power cord, uh, a bungee cord, is when I'm ready to use it, and I pull it out and I try to hook it on the other end, eh, it's just a little too short. Or when you hook it where you think you can hook it, it's too loose. Well, if you know about the ratio of the stretching of a paracord, it helps you in figuring out what size paracord you want to use when you're doing a particular job as to how far you want to stretch it. Uh, for example, believe it or not, the eighth inch paracord has a one to one and a half inch ratio from its natural state to its fully maxed out stretch state. Max out stretch state means just before you start pulling it so far, it starts damaging it. So that maxed area from natural to fully stretched is about a one and a half to one. So if you have eight inches and you stretch it out, you'll be 12 inches long, four inches longer. So, and you'll find that's true. Even with the bigger diameter, it does, it follows the same ratio. If instead of eight inches long, if I made this two feet long, then I could stretch it out to three feet from two feet. So the ratio is the same. As long as you remember that when you're trying to figure out using it, is that going to be long enough for that job? That's how you figure it out. The other thing is about this stuff is you can use it for other things too. Let's talk about what you can use this for. Um, for example, if you want to, people use it to bundle sticks together. So you have a whole bunch of sticks and then you wrap the the bungee cord around it and tie it off and then that holds them together. They use them for tie downs. Those are the common things we all use them for. Let me show you a couple of things that you don't, that you probably haven't seen before because of course this is the OTB thinker. We're going to show you a couple of things that you probably haven't seen. First one is on this cabinet right behind you so we can stand up and turn around. So let's just do that and stand up. Up we go and turn around. This is the cabinet I'm talking about. And it opens and shuts, but I like it to stay closed when it's closed, and I like it to stay open when I open it, so that if I get in there and do something, I don't have to keep bumping it with my elbow to keep it open. And also when I move it around, sometimes the doors will open in one position, but not in another. So this, by having this bungee cord on here, that helps that door do that. It pulls on it here to keep it closed, when it's in the closed position. When I open it over halfway, then it holds it open for me. And all this is is just one simple little eighth inch bungee cord with hooks on it. This is a Harbor Freight one. Nothing to it, and they're real easy, but it's a handy way of taking a bungee cord and actually using it for my cabinet. The other thing about this is, if you want, you can take this, and actually double up two of them on there if I wanted to. And by having two of them on here, now it increases the amount of strain. But yet, the range and the fact that it still go, works the way it's supposed to is gonna be the same. But it, it holds it much tighter if I use two of them. So you can adjust the, these types of things using bungee cords. That's what I was talking about, doubling and tripling them up. So, but this is a great use four bungee cords besides just tie downs. So I thought I'd show that to you on that cabinet. Now don't make fun of that cabinet. That cabinet is what, exactly what I want it to be. One of these days I'll tell you about it. The way it rolls around and why the doors move. That's another story. So that's another OTB thing. So the other thing you can do with paracord is when you're tying down. It's nice to have that flexibility so that you can get a certain amount of give. And a good example is on tarps with the wind. But another good example is when you're carrying things in your vehicle, like my truck or tied onto the roof, and you tie it all up, everything's good and tight, and you go down the road for a couple of miles and pull over and check it, and lo and behold, they're loose. And we can get into why that is, but it, it does happen, but there's a way to stop that. Instead of using just paracord or rope or whatever it is that you're going to use, suppose you use what I call the adjustable bungee cord. How many times have you hooked one end of the bungee cord, stretch it out, and it won't reach the other end? Because 
again, that's the one, one and a half inch rule. Uh, excuse me, one and one and a half ratio rule. And you, if you think about it, you'll know by looking at a clamp whether or not it'll fit onto a certain situation before you put it on, ever put it on there, if you think about it. But you can also make these things very adjustable. I can make this one, and it's a 12-inch bungee cord, but at the same time, if I tie a paracord to this end, guess what? Now I have a 24-inch bungee cord. Or, go out another foot, and I have a 36-inch bungee cord. So I have an adjustable bungee cord by putting cord on one end of it. This is a great way to tie things off. I do this all the time. And you could put one on one end. You could put a piece of, of something on both ends to tie it off and have your bungee cord in the middle to hold tension. So like if you're going across a long distance, like on the back of a truck, and you're tying from one corner to the other or something, and this will help hold tension on that. Now, as the old saying goes, it's only as strong as the weakest link. Guess where the weakest link is in this thing? Yes, it's the bungee cord. The power cord, the paracord has about a 550 pound test load. And this is probably closer to 75 pounds. So that'll get you in trouble too. But you really like the flexibility so it keeps that tension on that rope, having that bungee cord on there. Well, there's another thing that I can do, and I'll show you here on how I solve that problem. And I use these for my tie downs all the time. I have several of them in my truck, and I just carry them in there. Basically, what I've done is I've married the paracord and the bungee cord together. Like so. So one end of the cord, and I keep a certain amount here on this end so that I can tie it and use it by tying it off somewhere. If I want, I can just use the hook on here, and the other end of the cord is as long as you want it to be. And what you do is you take and use a clover hitch, and you have to look that up yourself. Maybe one day I'll show you about knots. But right now, if you put a clover hitch here, and the, what a clover hitch is for is that once you tie it onto here, if I pull on this side, that knot gets tighter, so it doesn't undo. If I pull on this side, the knot gets tighter. It doesn't come loose. That's what a, inherently the biggest thing about a clover hitch, that you get that so that it doesn't move. Then you go down to the other end of this. If this is 12 inches from here to here, I make, and I use three inches more of this rope in here, and I put a second clover hitch here to hold that in place. Now I have a permanent loop there, three inches longer than my bungee cord. Now when I tie this end off, and I pull this end tight, and tighten it off, if my load shifts a little bit, that loosens up, but I still got that tension on my rope at all times. And if that load shifts the other way and it starts pulling like crazy, guess what? It's not going to rip my bungee cord in two. These are awesome. This is the best little tie strap that you can have. Just put it on one end of your tie rope, make it to whatever length you want, and when you're not using them, just take and just wrap it all up. and put it in your glove box and it doesn't take up any space till you need them. And I keep four of these in my truck. I think they're 10 foot long, but they can be any length you want, any length bungee cord. I tend to use a shorter bungee cord because probably three inches of stretch is all you really need most of the time. And that seems to give me the best of making these things work the best. So, but you can make that any way you want. Make your bungee cord longer, make your power cord shorter. So that's up to you. Making your own is great. But this, this is probably one of my best little deals since I started playing with that, that I came up with. And it makes doing, tying down loads so much better than it used to be. Give it a try. Anyway, as you can see, bungee cords, it's not it's more than you thought it was. It's lots of uses for it. And I've got lots of other things I do with them. And if I can think of something else, I may point it out to you. But... It's a lot of fun. So you should have little bungee cords in your shop. And you don't need all those different sizes either, as I showed you. Most of the time, you only need one size fits all. So anyway, if you have any suggestions or any ideas of how you use bungee cord, 
leave it in the comments. We all would love to hear it. So if you learned something here today or you like this video, please say so. But most importantly, please come back again because we're nowhere near done. It's still hot. Thanks. We'll see you again soon.